All right, so we're going to continue on the uh, rebuild of the N55. So we've gone through the teardown of the engine, uh, remove everything, head, pistons, crankshaft. Uh, we did a little bit of dimensional inspection on the crankshaft now. We've got the block cleaned. We're going to go ahead and start our reassembly with uh, measurements and dimensional inspection. So... The first part, so our block is clean, our bores are cleaned, take a look, our bores are very clean, there's no gouges, scratches, heavy indentation, uh, wear marks or anything like that in my opinion the boards are very very clean okay so what I've already gone ahead and done the bore measurements It's our bore gauge, right? So this is going to be measure the inside bore at our, our three positions along the bore. Um, position one, about 10 millimeter be below the bore, and then about halfway point, and then about 10 millimeter above the bottom of the stroke. So I believe this is an 84 millimeter stroke. So you're going to be measured at 74 or 75 millimeter. And then the top will be 10 millimeter and then the difference between the two at the middle point maybe i think like uh 35 or 38 don't don't quote me on that so 10 millimeter from the top around 75 millimeter from the top down which is 10 millimeter from the bottom and then the middle point and you're going to be measuring this position i consider to be my b position and this position is considered to be my A position. So we're going to be measured at three locations along the bore to check the out of roundness, how much X shape the bore is. And then we're going to, along the length, we're going to check the taper, see if the bore is tapered. Okay. So what we do is that we set this position where the dial indicator moves about maybe 200 thousandths in and I set this to my 84 millimeter and I zeroed it out and so when I go into here I can tell how much plus or minus the bore is worn okay so I've gone ahead and done that for all the bores now the bores are not going to be per design because you're you're measuring a worn bore that's only a new work so you've got to measure the bore and you're gonna find it's not within BMW's criteria for the bore but what's important is that you also have to measure the piston and you have to compare the clearances and you have to make sure that clearances is within the criteria okay so we've gone ahead and done the bore measurements already the next thing that we did Next thing that we did is that we I went ahead and measure the piston skirt. I think this is about 10 to 12 millimeter from the bottom of the skirt. You measure and you mark it. You can see a mark right there. And then you then we go ahead and we use a caliper and we measure right at those 10 to 12 millimeter on both sides. I set this up and uh, set this up so this can't move, and then we check the the diameter of the piston. Okay. Okay. Of course, I mean this is not the way it's done, but you get the idea, right? To check the diameter of the piston, and then we check that of all the pistons, and you can see I've wrote the diameter on the back on the top. So this is three point three zero six six, and I do this for all six pistons. Once I've got the diameter of all six pistons, 
I calculate out the difference of the clearances between the cylinder bore and the piston diameter. Now, I look at the deviation in the diameters and I match up a particular piston to a particular bore depending on the wear. So I can maximize my, let me go, so I can minimize the clearances. I want as least clearances to be within the BMW tolerance. So if one piston gives me 2000 clearance, and then I have a piston that's a little bit larger by a couple tenths. And that will give me maybe 1.7. I will use that piston in that bore. So I reduce the clearances to be within the BMW criteria. Now BMW criteria I think is like 3000s. But I always like to be as close to the factory design on the lower end, lower end as much as possible. Okay. So... We've already gone ahead and measured the piston. And so we've got the piston. Now I just got to run my calculation to figure out which piston goes to which bore. Okay. Next step, where we're in the process of doing, we're measuring ring gaps. Okay. So you can see we've got the new piston ring set up inside here. Top ring, new BMW piston rings. You can see that they're all set up and labeled here. Okay, so we'll same thing. We're going to be measuring the piston ring right in its wear area, right where the top ring comes in its wear area. I think it's about a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch down. And we're going to be measured at, at the middle point and then at the bottom point, about 10 millimeter above the stroke. Pretty much about the same position we measure on the cylinder when we're taking up uh, our measurements. We'll do the measurement for each the top ring and the second ring at each of the three locations and then we'll take the ring gaps you know so right now you know so I've got this square there here inside here so this is squared inside here right now and you can see here Now what you want to do, you just want to have a very light drag. Now this is not the way I'm just trying to do it for illustration for the camera. But you want to have a light drag. And this is too much. This doesn't even go in there. Okay, you got a light drag right here. So we'll do that for all the six cylinders, top compression ring, middle compression ring, each of the three locations. And then we'll see what our ring gaps are looking like. So on this particular engine, we're going back with the, uh, can't pronounce this. I have a hard time pronouncing this. Kohler Ben Schmidt. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong because I know I'm messing that up majorly. Uh, German uh, OEM style bearings. Can't recall if this was factory, but I know they're an OEM manufacturer. Going back with the ACL uh, race series engine bearings for this particular rebuild. Uh, one of the other N55 that I'm also building simultaneously. I'm using King's bearings inside there. Um, first time using the race series. I'm going to see how that goes and how it checks out. I bought the standard and I also bought the 1000s oversized oil clearances. So uh, I'll, um, I'll have to make a decision uh, once I start to check the oil clearances and see what it looks like. Um, I think the standard should be fine, but I just bought this just to have that to see if I need it. The pistons, all the pistons have been weighed. I weigh the uh, rods, piston, rings, and bearings together on each one of them. And then compare the weights among the, all six. All six of these pistons uh, are within two grams of each other. Two or three grams, which is very good as a rotating assembly. So that's, that's checked out pretty good. So the next thing we're going to go ahead and do 
going to have to check the main bearing or clearances. We're going to install our crankshaft. Let's get this off of here. There is our crankshaft. All nicely polished. All right, so we've got the N55 crankshaft. Uh, this was already measured uh, on the main bearings journal and the rod journal for at 0 and 90 for out of round and taper. Uh, I'll put a link in the description of the other uh, N55 uh, crankshaft that I measured so you'll get an idea of what that looks like. So this is all acceptable within BMW tolerance. After that the uh, crankshaft was polished. It's got a nice polish to it so this is all ready to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and install this with the new main bearings and we're going to check the all clearance. We're going to go ahead and do that, uh, check the all clearance with the green plastic gauge. Alright, so let's get to it. All right, so this is what I like to call our dry fitment. We've installed the crankshaft. We've put the plastic gauge. We've put the blood plate on dry. We're going to torque this down, take it off back, and check our clearances. Okay. Uh, initial torque, 20 newton meters.
All clearance looks pretty damn good. Very nice. That thing looks to be right between one and a half mils to two mils. Or one and a half thousands to two thousands. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look. That looks nice. Yep, one and a half. One and a half thousands. One and a half thousands. One and a half thousands. All our main bearings, all clearance checks out good, all within acceptable BMW clearances. Um, spec is about two thousands. We're under that. Uh, spec is eight tenths to 0 0.0018. All these are measuring uh, under two thousands, right about one and a half thousands, 0 0.0015. So main bearings are good. We'll go ahead and remove this. Then we'll get ready for our crankshaft insulation with the bed plate and the sealant. Okay.